Hi, I'm from Circle K in Europe and today I'm going to talk about Call the Irish Food and Drink and how as a company Circle K supports it. So welcome to this episode of Amazing Food and Drink TV. Today we're with Derek Murphy, who's Food Director of Circle K Europe. And we're going to hear a bit about Derek's background and his company. So over to you Derek, welcome to Belfast. Thanks very much, Colin. Um, in terms of myself, I'm a, I'm, I'm a food director of, of Circle K in Europe. There's actually two of us. I have a colleague in, uh, from Estonia as well. Uh, our job is to work and support the nine, what we call business units, so the nine countries where we work across Europe with, mm -hmm. which is uh, the, the Baltics, so Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, uh, Scandinavia, which is uh, Denmark, Sweden and Norway. And then we also have stores in Russia. We have a, quite a presence in Poland and obviously Ireland then as well, which is uh, where I came with. So in terms of myself, I've been in the retail industry for over 20 years, uh, particularly focusing on food. So uh, I've had my own store. I've been a franchisee. Very good. And um, I've, I've just spent a lot of time from supermarkets to what we call QSRs or quick service restaurants, so fast food, uh, and then forecourt as well. Brilliant. And in terms of Circle K, tell us a bit about it. Circle K is a, a, a and its parent company, Couchard. Circle K, K is the trading name of a, a, a of Couchard, and Couchard is a French uh, Canadian company. Uh, we're one of the biggest retailers in the world. We've got um, about fifteen thousand stores in total, ten thousand in North America, uh, circa three thousand, just under three thousand in Europe, and then another two thousand uh, franchise stores across kind of 14 countries, including Asia, Mexico, um, places like that, we've got a lot of stores as well. Massive, absolutely massive. Yeah. And on that point then, what's it like running a massive company like Circle K? Well, I, I know don't you don't run, run the, the whole thing. I know you don't run the whole thing. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I'm, I'm a cog in a machine, I think, is, is the way to go. We've got a, we've got a lovely philosophy as a company um, where we, we call ourselves a family of merchants, so a family of retailers. Okay. Um, everyone's opinion is equally valid. And when you're in such a huge company, that's really important. That um, you know, from it doesn't matter what your level is, doesn't matter where you, what, what what part you play in the company. If you come up with an idea, your idea gets heard, and and, and really you're able to uh, you're able to express yourself, you're able to be free, and you're able to be open. And in a big company like ours, I think that's really really important. Yeah, very good. So it's like a family oriented company, even though it's it's massive. Absolutely, even though it's a shareholder owned, it's it's uh, it's 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 a huge uh, conglomerate. It's massive. I think in terms of a turnover, it's the biggest Canadian company. Um, so bigger than any of the banks or anything else in Canada, but it is wow. it is it is ma a massive company, and yet you do have that family feel there as well, where where everyone. And, and sometimes that's a cliche, but th in this case, it's actually true. Yeah, yeah, it's it's actually true. We've got a there, there's a there's a culture around pride tours where where all the senior executives will get on a plane and come visit each country uh, once twice a year, and they'll go in, they'll visit stores, they'll talk to the staff, they they ignore anybody else they, <laughs> they, they ignore us but they'll, they'll talk to the staff they'll engage with the staff and, and really it's a really nice it's it's a really nice thing and the whole idea is that that you know we're, we're built on, on on our couple of hundred thousand staff we have in the stores yeah uh, and then our job is to kind of try find out what the customer trends are what drive the customer to shop with us and how we make the customer journey easy is the big thing you know what that's our that's our competitive advantage is that Brilliant. We, we focus on the easy piece. yeah because we're going to ask about that later in terms of what's the best bits what's the worst parts uh worst parts uh airplanes um <laughs> uh, yeah you know you know never get to love it i think uh love affair ended after the first flight <laughs> Uh, it was delayed and bags lost and everything else. So uh, and you're based in Oslo. You were telling me. Uh, desk is in Oslo, and uh, but uh, but I work across Europe. Um, I live in Dublin, uh, so I, I I do travel quite a bit. Uh, that's probably the worst bit, and, and and the best bit is interacting with some brilliant people. You know, I've got we've got fantastic people across nine countries, and it's it's really interesting people's personalities uh, that are based on you know I, I'm a nature v nurture I'm a I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a nurture person the way people are brought up and each each country's kind of individual people are very different and, yeah uh, and you were saying that the Baltic regions are actually quite Irish they're, they're very like us yeah yeah I think that's uh, you know when you when you see the Baltics they're outgoing they're very uh, open um, and they're, they're very very much like us and I think that's why they integrate so well when the, the guys come over here I have a lot of friends now from Lithuania, Latvia that, that come over and they just integrate so well into Ireland. 
Uh, I think the Polish the same. And then when you get to Scandinavia, a little bit more reserved, a little okay. bit more uh, quieter and stuff, but still lovely people. Brilliant. And in terms of your customers, you mentioned your customers are making it easy for them. Have customer expectations changed over the years? If so, how? Positively, I, negatively? I think I think they have. They've massively changed, um, but at its core, it's still the same. It's kind of delivering quality fast mm -hmm. is what people are after. They're looking for easy solutions to their to, to whatever it, life throws at them, mm -hmm. you know. And and our job is to kind of guess what does the customer need. How do we make it easy for them to come in and get it? But in terms of their expectations, absolutely. Um, as I think retail is almost a, a, a microcosm of all the other stuff that goes on in the world. So when people are sitting saying, you know, we need to focus on our environment, mm -hmm. that's when, you know, we don't have CR strategies necessarily because we're just focused on making the world a better place. Okay. We're focused on our customer who wants to make the world a better place. So we're going to go on that journey with them and we're going to bring them on the journey with us. And that's kind of important. So when we talk about there's fads occur, which mm -hmm. is, you know, I, I'm going to give up gluten or I'm going to give up whatever. But then there's actual movements where you can see people are eating less meat. They're, these, these aren't fads. These are mega trends. Like veganism, seeing. for example? Yeah, like veganism or, or, or even, you know, we're talking flexitarians now, yeah. vegetarians. It's changing an awful lot. People so are, how do you actually find out what your customers want? What, what sort of research do you carry out? We speak to them. Okay. Uh, but really, if you... <laughs> We speak directly to the customers quite a lot, uh, ask them what they do, we do market research. But a lot of what you see is 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 sometimes that's too late. Mm -hmm. If you're sitting talking to your customers going, what do they want? You're probably behind the curve. Okay. Um, that would be my opinion. I think overall, you've nearly got to get ahead of what the customer wants. And would you use observation techniques, for example? Watching how they go around stores? Yeah, and I think you, you, we, you'd, you'd look directly at what the customer's actual behavior is, but you also look at these mega trends that are coming. Mm -hmm. You look at what's coming down the track and say, okay, flexitarianism, vegetarianism, veganism yeah. is going to come. Will vegans engage with us? Uh, difficult when you're in a fuel business, um, but absolutely some will. Yeah. Vegetarians, absolutely more likely. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you and know, flexitarians, and absolutely, flexitarians again, yeah. absolutely again. And I think the whole thing is, you know, we, we, and then not getting completely focused on it because we also have a customer that doesn't want that. Of course. You know, yeah. that wants indulgence. The mainstream for want yeah, of a better expression. But, you know, and, and, and the mainstream now is kind of becoming a lot healthier, a lot smarter. Yeah. A lot of, you know, we, we've, we have countless stories of the big truck driver coming in and ordering a salad. Uh, because, <laughs> because, 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 yeah, because he wants, he wants to change. And, you know, I, I remember Breakfast Roll Man at the, the, the 90s and, 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 and the turn of the millennia was, was everywhere. That was ubiquitous. That was our customer. And now our customer is, is varied. We still have some Breakfast Roll Men, but more mm -hmm. often than not, that Breakfast Roll Man will have a Breakfast Roll for his breakfast and then a nice healthy salad for his lunch. Unbelievable. Balancing their diet a bit. You yeah. know, so people and that's fun. amazing because I mean, truckers you expect and greasy spoon. Yeah, but education kicks in. You know, people are getting smarter, they're getting yeah. more educated. You know, it's not necessarily college education. No. But life education now is much, you know, the internet's helping, a lot of other stuff is helping, but people are becoming more aware of what's yeah, good for them. More savvy. What's uh, there, you know. Absolutely. So how do you deliver five-star service every time? Uh, we, the answer is we wish we delivered five-star <laughs> service every time. I think our focus is to deliver that five-star service, but it, it, we have it in our DNA. Our, our, our commitment to making the customer journey easy okay. is the thing that helps us to deliver much better service than our competitors. Do we deliver five star every time? Absolutely not. That's a, that's certainly the goal. Yeah, it's as brilliant. Do we deliver more than most people in the industry? Absolutely, I believe that. Yeah, and, and do you find that um, customer service is different in the different countries throughout Europe and North America? Not really. Not really. I think I think overall, um, I think customer types are very similar, especially across the first world. So if we take the first world, which mm -hmm. is pretty much where we operate, yeah, um, I think customer service is very much similar. The, the the how you buddy in Dublin yeah versus you know the thank you sir yeah, have uh, a nice day in, in have a nice day in America is yeah. different but the the sentiment's the same and and the way of talking to the customer I think is the same we try to be natural and we try to be approachable um in terms of how we talk to the customer and whatever the local market how they 
how the customer what what customer service means there is what yeah. we're focused on. And I think there's training in each of the countries for that, is it? Yeah, yeah, uh, but it's very local. Um, okay. we, we we're very local on our product, and we're very local on how we how we how we serve the customer, how we talk to the customer, because the customer is local. So therefore, we have to be local as well. It's very difficult when you're a big company to sit and say, you know, what's the perfect formula for serving every customer in every country. Yeah, so it's like think global, act local, is not the yeah, expression. Exactly, we 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 call it super local, super super global, super local. Very and good. So yeah, brilliant. In terms of um, the mix of food and drink, is that a perfect recipe for your typical customers? You know what? It's uh, it's becoming it. Um, I think, you know, over the years we've seen uh, the the forecourt industry uh, evolve in terms of what it, it delivers to the customer. Uh, we would have always talked about convenience stores. Uh, we now talk more about I impulse stores. Mm -hmm. And uh, part of that impulse is coffee and food and really the customer coming in wanting a an occasion. They're not coming in for the exact products anymore. They're coming in, it's breakfast, I want breakfast. It's lunch, I want lunch. I fancy a snack. Yeah. I just want a break on the road, I want this. So we're much more focused now on what's the occasion for the customer than what we would have previously done, which was let's give them food and drink, let's focus. We're, we're very hot dogs focused in Europe. Uh, we're very famous for hot dogs, we're brilliant at them. Um, and we tend to own that marketplace in most countries where we operate. But in Ireland, we're only, we're, we're making steps in hot dogs, people are getting into it, but that's, that's not the customer local preference. Yeah, and on that, in terms of the food that you serve, and we chatted before, um, is provenance, sustainability, Organic food, is that important to Circle K? I think if, if I start with the provenance piece, I think provenance is really important. Uh, we, 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 we employ people in the local areas uh, and we like to support local business. Mm -hmm. So I would say 80% of our supply base in Ireland is local, is, your, is Irish. Uh, and we do Ireland of Ireland, uh, but uh, we, we, we would have about 80% of our suppliers Irish. And that's the case across most countries we operate in, or all countries mm -hmm. we operate in really. You want to reduce your air miles. Um, you want to reduce uh, and, and really part of our CR strategy, our cost, um, corporate responsibility strategy is, to, is to, to have less air miles, to be smarter around how we um, use local provenance to support suppliers. But there's also a piece of, you know, you're supporting the local farmer, you're supporting, supporting the local community mm -hmm. and then the local community supporting you. Community and shopping, you know. So if you're like making hot dogs in Ireland, I take it that the sausage meat is sourced here, it's not coming from somewhere else? Absolutely. So again, it depends. So if it, quality of product is critically important. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to hot dogs, we've got an Irish hot dog, a fantastic Irish hot dog that's produced by Not Fans in Galway. That's 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 a great product. Uh, but when it comes to bratwursts and 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 some of the really great uh, German style products or or Norwegian style products, we we'll take those from the country they come from because yeah. the quality of product is is probably the most important to the customer and the the expertise isn't here to execute that product. Okay. If I want to do cheddar yeah. in Estonia, I'll take the cheddar from here yeah. because we know cheddar. That's, okay. our, that's our specialist. And, and I think part of it is, um, you know, Ireland is specialized in certain zones. We, we've got a very good growing Mexican food industry now that we're starting in our stores and it's starting to break gain pace across Europe, but in particular started in Ireland. And, you know, provenance there. A lot of it's Mexico. <laughs> it just tends <laughs> to be. We're not, we're not great on the chili, on uh, growing chilies and stuff like that. So I think, I think, but the majority of our uh, of, of what we do is Irish, if if at all possible. If possible. And how do your customers find out? Do they like it? Do they not like it? Do they tell you? I think, I think, when it comes to customers telling you stories and, and doing whatever, it, it it's almost become an expected thing. Okay. Um, I don't think it's something we all shout and scream about anymore. Um, mm -hmm. It's something that is a given. It's not part for the course. It's part yeah. for the course. If you're not doing it, it's it's the negative is going to come out. You're mm -hmm. you're going to be um, people will talk negatively about you. Social in the age of social media and everything else, it goes viral, yeah. and then you sit there and you have to deal with the consequences. Yeah, so it's word of mouth on steroids. So it's almost yeah. yeah. But I think I think overall, you know, I, I remember years ago with the coffee business when we start talking about fair trade and. Rainforest Alliance and everything else, and now the customer. If you ask the customer, you know, what do you think about fair trade? Oh, absolutely love it, love it, love it. Don't 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 necessarily know what it means anymore, <laughs> yeah. but it's about now. It's about what's my origin story. Yeah. It's bringing it to the next level. What do we care about? Tell us your story. Don't tell us what the label is anymore. It's much more of a what's your real story. Don't be lazy. You Brilliant. know, make sure you're doing it right. And and the customer is starting to t think more like that, and and it's a it's a high proportion. It's a really high proportion of customers now are starting to care 
and if the negative does happen you will loop that customer okay that, that's which is good for you because you're not exactly exactly yeah. and i think i think that it's it's and, and again i i credit the irish industry irish industry a lot our, our mm -hmm. competitors a lot because i think not only in forecourt and sea stores and stuff we've got a fantastic provenance to mm -hmm. most of our stuff you know and it seems as you say right across ireland yeah. right across all the different yeah, yeah. types of stores they're all doing it which yeah. is great and even even when people are coming in you know like we're obviously a massive global company you know we, we've got the german discounters coming in um and, and trading a lot here but but they realize very quickly how important this customers yeah and they start sourcing they're doing it you know they source they this but but the main reason for all of this is quality product so yeah. the farms are producing amazing quality product and we've got brilliant we've brilliant meat etc here meat, absolutely everything. the weather yeah. the weather is perfect for it you know as long as we can hold global warming off for a bit we're yeah. all, good. <laughs> all right but, uh, i think i think the weather is brilliant for um uh, for that that temper climate means we've got fantastic grass fantastic cows with milk and you know a, a lot of our product is is just fa brilliant because we've got the perfect little country for growing and a fantastic story to tell how do you get that out to your customers that you're actually using the local farmer using the local cheddar cheese maker we we, we do a lot of it through our staff actually in terms of our training uh, we do a lot of training in in and i'm talking ireland specific here mm -hmm. but we, when we train our staff we teach them the problems we tell them the stories um, it, it, it's a big part of that journey. I think, uh, you know, it, it can be a bit plastic to put up signs and to, to yeah. say this is what we do and this is this and put labels on everything. But I think overall what we like to do is we like to train our staff, staff to have the conversation because that's what the customer really cares. That's yeah. where they really, you know, when they're talking to Mary down in Cashel, they <laughs> want to know, tell me that story and, 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 and wh where, where does that come from? You know, can I, can I buy it in a supermarket or, you know, or something similar? Or, you know, I think that's a lot of what they want. Perfect. And you know better than I, people buy people. So that's <laughs> right. That, that's a really good way to go. Absolutely. I like that idea. Yeah. Brilliant. I'm interested to hear how tourism has had an impact on Circle K in Ireland particularly, if at all. I mean, we're really starting to see tour tourists come to the north, which we hadn't seen before. Yeah. I mean, in, in the south, you've had it for a longer time. Yeah, and I, th I think it does impact. It doesn't, uh, we, we think it doesn't impact as much as it does, I think. Um, we, it isn't a key focus for us, mm -hmm. uh, especially when we work across lots of markets. Okay. Um, but if I can take on my European experience, where, you know, if you're in a, you're in a store in Norway, you know, the, the, the Swedes are traveling. If you're in Denmark, everyone's traveling through Denmark. It's yeah. a hub. If you're in Poland, Poland's the biggest hub I've ever seen in terms of activity of people just driving through, coming through, truck drivers, everything, all nationalities. Um, whether it be tourism or work, work tourism, where people are tra traveling through on work. And I think when it comes to us, we do get buses into our stores. We do get a lot of stuff. And that's what we class as tourism. Oh, yeah. we got a bus. <laughs> but actually, the amount of people renting cars coming to visit Ireland and, and, and the tourism ramping up and stuff, it's really good. And it's nice to be Circle K in that world. Yeah. Because we're known, especially with our US friends. And that's uh, what I was going to say. You've got people from America. You've got people from Central Europe, Eastern Europe coming. Yeah. And they recognize the brand. Yeah. I, I had a I had an interesting piece in the air, going to the airport where um I got... I got I, stupidly brought a salad onto a plane trying to go to America the last time and uh, I brought a salad from, from chopped in the oh. airport and was going through and said nothing organic no I have nothing except my lunch of course and uh, when I was going through and uh, the lady stopped me and she, I, I put the as I was talking to the immigration person I put the salad up on the counter and said no I have nothing organic <laughs> and she said but what's that it's a salad and I very bad reaction very you know you know sir you're not to do this you're not to do this who do you work for circle K Circle K is not in Ireland. And I said, oh, yeah, we are. We're, we're Topaz. We're, we're rebranding and we're, we're, we're going there. She said, oh, wow, where was my local? She let you off. <laughs> so I got away with it. So the Irish flagging combined with a bit of Circle K was really good. But absolutely, it's, uh, it's brilliant. Uh, our, our American friends all know, uh, all know us very well and Canadians. Which too, is great. And they travel a lot. So yeah, because if, if we were going to America and you see something from, from home, your initial reaction is, oh, let's go there. I mean, to be, to be stereotypical, you go to the Irish bar when yeah, you go to yeah, places, yeah, yeah. 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 So it's good for us. It is yeah, good for really us. Good. I, 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 think, I think Americans know us very well. Magic. And in terms then of marketing campaigns, any good ones you've been involved in? Any interesting ones? Any ones coming up you want to talk about? It's been involved in lots. We've, uh, our, our, our coffee campaign, Simply Great Coffee, was fan really fantastic and really hit a chord with the Irish customer. We got a, we got a big uptake in how much coffee we sell and, and also the, the, you know, we changed the quality of the product. We changed everything about it when we did it. Mm -hmm. But um, it, we, got a, we got a really good um, impact from the customer. I think we did something we called internally Skyfall. 
when we rebranded Circle K okay. across the business. Um, that got a really great reaction from the customer because uh, you know new 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 owners coming in investing very heavily in our business mm -hmm. in Ireland, and, and that was really good. But at the moment we we've, we've we're, we're really trying to change the customer experience. We're investing in the in stores, and I I'm I'm actually running this project in Europe, which we're calling internally New Circle K stores. Okay. Not very imaginative, but that's what we're calling it. <laughs> and, and what we're doing is we're, we're, we have a forecourt brand and then we have a, a store. But what we're doing now is working on the store brand. What does it look like? What's the experience of the customer? Mm -hmm. And that's really a big focus area for us at the moment. And that's a really exciting one. And marketing it is really exciting as well. So you're going to see it in Ireland very soon. But, and you're ruled out right across Europe, right across, is it North America as well? No, no, just Europe at the moment. Okay. Um, so we've got, uh, we've got about 50, 50 stores in Europe today. Uh, it's only started and, and testing and trialing. Um, by the end of April, we'll have um, about 100 stores. And by the following April, we'll have about 350 um, stores, right. and then we'll, we, we'll really get our pace at that. So you're going hard? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like it? Go hard or go home. <laughs> Brilliant. And in terms then of Ireland, how important is food culture in Ireland? How, how do you see that? I, I, I see Ireland as kind of probably one of the most progressive food places in the world. I really do. Um, you know, we, Not that we'll be bad. No, no, no. But uh, again, I mean, in terms of in terms of forecourt, we, we, we win a lot of what we call NAX awards between ourselves and our competitors, which is the North American Convenience uh, Association Award for the best sea stores in the world. Okay. Um, Ireland, I think, has won about half of these awards uh, between ourselves and our competitors. Um, and it's because we are, are the best. But I think when it comes to it, Irish people are very experimental. <laughs> we were, you know, potatoes and cabbage not <laughs> 20 years ago. Yeah. And then we all travelled. Mm -hmm. um, and then when the, the tiger came in and we all started to, people came back. Yeah, plenty of money. Plenty of money, but not just money, experience. Yeah, yeah. So people have been living in New York, living in Boston, living in Vancouver, living in Mexico, living in mm -hmm. Australia. And people started coming back to have their families, to have their kids and stuff. And, and we see a lot of, I, I, see, I see immigration as a real positive because so much comes back. Absolutely. Um, and when it comes back, it comes back with ideas. And I think in terms of the high street in, in Dublin, and in Belfast, mm -hmm. I don't think there's much more uh, innovative places in the world anymore. For such small populations, these crazy people doing crazy things with food, with Mongolian barbecues. And yeah, but I've, been, I've been there but, in Dublin. But, yeah, yeah, but it, it's, it, there's incredible stuff going on on the high street. And, and it's, it's really innovative. It's really risk, risky. Um, but it's working. And it's because the Irish customer is very experimental. They will try new things, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll do new things, they'll try experiences on holidays, come back and look for the Portuguese Nata Tart when they come back, you know, <laughs> but it's all of that stuff. That's true. And, yeah, and it's true. unique because most countries you come back and you're back to your old food. So, so tell me then, because you talked about the, the Mexican sort of uh, adventure in Circle K, where does Circle K fit in the Irish food culture? I think part of, part of what we do is we do tend to be look for that core customer. Mm -hmm. There is part of it that is looking at that core customer and looking what that local customer So it's customer your sandwich is. and coffee type sandwich stuff? Sandwich yeah, and coffee yeah, yeah. is the core. But then on top of that, you're, 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 you're looking for those things that are points of difference. What, what are we different? What's going to make us famous out there? Because the core tends to be easily copied, easily, you know, everybody goes there very quickly yeah. and goes, that's what the main customer wants. Mm -hmm. But then when you're sitting and you want something a bit different, you want that, those little points of difference as well. And I think that's where... That's where we excel. We we we, we don't really do um, um, uh, brands under our roof. We 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 are Circle K. We're about our own product uh, and owning those products. And, Very and good. it's it's a it's a difference out there. Oh, that's really interesting, actually. And what do you think? I mean, you're involved in food a long time. What do you think is the future for food and drink in Ireland? I think it's going to keep on evolving. I think we are going to see um, a lot more, a lot people changing their diet a lot throughout mm -hmm. uh, the week. You know, I think this this flexitarian thing. When I when I heard it, I thought it was funny. <laughs> I thought that's a crazy idea. Yeah. <laughs> Who's going to do that? And now I do it a bit of it myself. Me too. And I think I think part of what what will happen is you will see that in the same way as people indulge in in chocolate um, at periods of the day or periods of the week. I think people will start to indulge more in what we would currently see as our core offer as yeah. our core thing. And then they will they will tend to push into other areas throughout the week and, and test different things and maybe have fish one day maybe just nothing just meat another day may, or maybe uh, salad some days and I think you're going to find people's diets are going to vary a lot more which means we need to be much more 
things around the post. I was going to ask you, have yeah. we got a plan in place for this? No, just, just keep on, <laughs> keep on <laughs> innovating, keep on moving. And I, I think sometimes you, you, you've got to go with the curve. And the curve is, is moving very quickly in Ireland at the moment. Brilliant. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an exciting place to do business. And, and that, you've laid me on very well too, in terms of Circle K rolling out you know, more franchises, particularly in the north, because you haven't got as many here. What's the plan? I am not a hundred percent sure on it. Um, okay. If I'm if I'm completely honest, I think we we're we're always growing. Um, we're always focused on on uh, on on uh, how we grow, how we uh, acquire new business. Mm -hmm. um, I think certainly if there's opportunity there and the opportunity comes up, we we'll be there to take it. Um, but but again, marketplaces are are are. Uh, you know the opportunity has to come first. You okay. know if everyone sits there saying we want to continue owning our own business, we'll probably grow organically, and we'll add a few stores uh, every now and, and then. And do you own some of them yourselves as well as franchisees? We only own actually one in Northern Ireland. Okay. Um, we own a a, a a huge amount down the south. We're own over one hundred and fifty stores down the south. Mm -hmm. But uh, when it comes to the north, we 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 only own one store in Larne, um, and the rest are franchise. Right. So if I want to become a franchisee of Circle K, how do you go about it? I'll give you a contact number. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help, uh, but uh, yeah, certainly we have a brilliant franchise team led by uh, led by Jonathan Diver and Jonathan. But uh, Jonathan and his team would really help. But you can give me some details yeah, after. Of course. Uh, and in terms of the, the future for Circle K globally, world domination. Yeah, I think we're we're going to continue to grow. We we we've been a company that's grown by acquisition quite mm -hmm. a lot. I think our focus now is going to be a little bit on on how do we grow our core business. So a lot of the time we, we put most of our capital into n new ventures and buying new companies, um, acquiring uh, competitors. We bought CST brands, I think two years ago or a year and a half ago, and it was 2000 stores. Okay. So that's one purchase. So I think when, when, when you look, we, 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 we will absolutely keep on acquiring like that. But you know, there's a, li a limit to how many of these come on the market. Yeah. Uh, so I think w overall we're gonna we're really gonna be focused on how do we grow our existing business, uh, and that's certainly what my focus is in in, in, in my day job. Yeah, so less about acquisition, more about the core. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll we'll focus on the core a lot more, and how do we grow the core, and how do we invest in the core, keep that making that customer experience better. Brilliant. And tell me uh, about uh, Derek Murphy PLC. What's next for Derek Murphy? I'm gonna keep on uh, keep keep on working hard on the day job. Keep on uh, keep on rolling out these new stores. I think I'm I'm busy enough without having to look at medium to long term goals at the moment. Okay. Uh, the the focus is very much getting these new stores opened and out there. Um, for me at the moment and uh, and continuing to support the, the 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 business units in our countries and in, in developing their food offers for their local customers. Brilliant. And if I wanted to find out more about Circle K, Derek. How do you do it? Website's the best place uh, to start. Uh, Is it circlek.ie? Circlek.ie for the Irish one. Uh, and then, then, then we have circlek.com. But uh, again, any Google search, you'll find out each country. Uh, we're always looking for great people out there. So if, yeah, if, if anyone's jumping, uh, looking for franchise, looking for um, uh, work, looking to, to, to work with us and to, to, to become part of that uh, family of merchants, we're always, we're always there on the website. But again, if you're looking to be a customer, a fuel customer, anything like that, it's all, it's all on the website. Okay, and lastly, what what's the future for Irish food and drink uh, throughout the world? I think it's really bright. I think I think we've we've got a, a Borbi are an unbelievable organisation in terms of, I, and I know they support our, all Ireland now, mm -hmm. but they're very supportive of selling our quality message across the world, and to me, that's what's going to be the thing that really wins overall. I think you know we've got we've got hiccups like Brexit and all of that stuff coming. Yeah. Um but but overall what we're looking at is we have a great product. People like great products. Yeah. So for me the future of Irish food and drink is 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 absolutely massive because we have great farmers, great producers, great companies working with that product and then we're, we're good at exporting. We're a little island and I think 14 billion last year or something. Unbelievable. We exported. We're good at exporting incredible. products and people actually, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, we really are. are. Yeah, the people keep on coming back today. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, Derek, thank you very much indeed. That was absolutely fascinating. No problem. And I wish you all the best in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. So thanks very much for, for watching and I'm sure you'll be very interested to hear what Derek had to say. So until next time, all the best. Bye.